and welcome to my series of short videos in which we discuss how the Arduino interacts with various electronic components. Yes, in less than 15 minutes we'll go over the basics, how they can be used, hints, tips, tricks and traps. Yes indeed, now this is part two of keeping your code organised and we're going to be talking about namespaces. Now namespaces are optional obviously, um, but they do help structure your code. So let's think about what we mean by namespaces. Now, namespaces allow us as developers to implement a mechanism to express some sort of logical grouping. All right, so we're going to group things together logically and say, right, we'll name those in a particular way. And it really does help. Let me give you a real world example of where we use namespaces that's got nothing to do with coding whatsoever. I want to give a big shout out to PCB Way, PCB Prototype, the easy way. Now we're all familiar with their special PCBs, $5 for 10 pieces, but uh, you can also have flex PCBs, advanced PCBs, and of course you can order custom parts. Let's have a look at the CNC and 3D printing options they have. So it's 3D printing first. You upload your CAD files as you would do normally for a PCB, but then you select your materials and submit a quote request. CNC machining is pretty similar in the way you submit your files, upload your CAD files, select one of these many, many different types of material you can use. And of course, there are also 27 different options for the surface finishing. Just look at a few of those there from anodized, brushed, bead blast, spray painting, and there's more under that list as well. And finally, there's sheet metal, laser cutting and bending. So let's have a look at that. Once again, you upload your CAD files, select the product you want to make it from and uh, specify a few of the parameters here about whether you want threads for example and you can always submit your request for a quote and it's about uh, seven to nine business days to get it done okay that's pcb way excellent service good quality why don't you check them out now now let's assume you've been invited to an away day to discuss c 24 yes i know it hasn't been invented yet but let's assume we've all been invited to make it happen now, Adafruit's been invited, lucky for them, eh? And Pimeroni, they've been invited. Pimeroni is a UK company, by the way. But anyway, Adafruit's there, Pimeroni's there, maybe a few other companies as well, and some independents. So me, I'm there. Look, I'm down there, you see, as an independent, Ralph. Uh, Jim's there. I don't know where he comes from, though. And Reshmi, she's there as well. So we're sort of independents, and we're not really belonging to any one particular company. So what do the organisers do? Well, obviously, they have tables for Adafruit. Yeah, that's fine. And they have tables for Pimeroni. But for us, they just put us onto independent contractor tables. Yeah. So they cluster us together. And why does this help? Well, imagine if you're wandering about this, this conference hall now, whatever, talking to people, or what should happen in C24. You meet somebody and you think, who are you? So you've wandered around the conference hall and you spot me. Well, you don't know it's me until you get a bit closer and then you read my name badge. You go, ah, it's Ralph. Where on earth does he fit in? And underneath, there's a logical grouping and it says, brackets, independent. You go, ah, now I know where you fit into all this. You're not part of Adafruit. You're not part of Pimeroni, nor anybody else. You're an independent. Great, I'll have a little chat. In fact, Ralph, you're so good. I like your YouTube videos so much. I'm going to buy you a beer. Yeah, I know. I wish. Anyway, you can see how logical grouping in real life works and helps. And in C++, it does pretty much the same. And the bigger the project, the better it is. But even for this tiny little project on the screen here, it works very well. Let's talk about this and see the code that does it. Right, now this is a, a Noddy project. Um, you can probably barely read that. Let me just um, reduce the lighting on there so you just so you can see the screen there we are look this is an lcd screen 16 by 2 we went through all this in the previous video that that one there right so if you haven't watched that yet about how to split your code up into multiple files i'd highly recommend you watch that first this this video will then make a lot more sense but up to you so lcd screen 16 by 2 um, this little thing here that's a temperature sensor, a DS18B20, very easy to use, only got three wires, and a push button down here. And when we push the push button, if you watch the LCD screen, you'll see that the temperature display, there we are, look, 24 degrees, and it, and it really is, yes, it's quite warm in here. Now, in real life, this screen here looks beautiful and gorgeous, and it's nice deep ocean blue with white writing. On my video, it looks a bit rubbish, but never mind, that's not what we're here to discuss. 
Now we went through the code that runs this in that previous video um, and we split the code from the main file um, into at least two separates with the third one that said globals. Let's get there wasn't a lot in there. So let's have a look at that and also now I'll have a look how namespaces fit into that and why they're useful and why they make your code better. And this was the final result where we had three files at the top. You see LCD helper, sensor helper and globals with not a lot in it really because we didn't really have very many globals. Although we did discuss whether that button should be put in there. And of course, yes, the answer was yes, of course it should be put in there. However, the thing that we did not discuss was in the main uh, file now, this main.cpp, that's the actual .ino file that you would use in an Arduino IDE, which this isn't. Um, you'll see things like digital read, sensor, colon, colon, pin button. So we said, what's this colon, colon bit? Yeah, now, of course, as you've already guessed, and as we alluded to in the last video, it's got something to do with name spaces, but what's it all about? So let's have a look at this one first. Yes, even though this particular implementation of a namespace, we thought, hmm, I don't think the button should go into the sensor namespace, but we'll move on from that. If we have a look at the sensor file at the top then, where all our sensor-related work is, we'll see that, yes, we've declared all these things down here, and we've got a couple of functions down here as well, but the bit we didn't discuss last time was this here, namespace sensor. Now what we're saying is we're going to logically group everything between this curly brace and the one right at the bottom where it ends, all the way down here, main space sensor, let's have a look. And we're going to say everything within that belongs to one of those logical tables that we saw, you know, Pimeroni, Adafruit, independent contractors, so that we can identify where the things that we are calling come from. So within this, everything that we ever refer to in here if you're not actually in the file itself, has got to start with sensor colon colon. Fine. Okay, and that sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? So while we're writing our code in here, we don't need to use anything with sensor colon colon because it's all within that namespace already. Yes, they know each other. It's like all the people in Adafruit table, they know all who they are and they all belong to the same table. They don't have to read their name badges to find out, oh, you belong to Adafruit as well. No. They know who they are. But as soon as we move out of this comfort zone of sensor helper and go back to main, or the main sketch, I and O, to get hold of that pin button, we have to say sensor colon colon pin button. If we took that away, the compiler is going to say pin button. Hmm, where's that come from? Oh, well, look, we've got a red squiggly, and it'll say it's not defined. Correct. Because pin button without any kind of namespace now would belong in the global namespace, i.e. the undefined global namespace as part of every C++ program. And there isn't one. It's only defined in the sensor namespace. Now, when you read your code in future, of course, you'll see that you have to put the sensor colon colon in front of everything that's related to the sensor namespace, including the get temperature function which we defined in that namespace. So we have to put sensor colon colon get temperature. And your program suddenly becomes much better documenting, self-documenting really, because although you're calling this routine, and if you didn't have a namespace in front of it, how would you know where it belongs to? Does, does it come from the sensor or the LCD helper or globals or indeed any number of other files? Or is it buried in this main.cpp file? By putting a namespace in front, We've identified where it's come from. And by logically grouping these things that all belong to the sensor, we get a we get a much better feel of how our program is structured and therefore makes it easier to maintain. Now we said last time that this button, this push button that's on the uh, breadboard there, and every time we push it, it updates the temperature sensor. We said, well, we're not really happy that should be in the sensor file, really. Uh, it just doesn't belong there. You come back to this program in a year's time, and the last place you'll probably look is in the sensor helper to find some kind of definitional code belonging to that button. It really should have been part of globals. Do we really want this to be a global, a real global, or not? Well, let's move it and see what we can do. 
So I've moved it out of the sensor helper file at the top there, moved it out of there and put it into globals. Now this is a global, yeah, global variable. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, all right, look, he's getting angry again. We're putting stuff into globals and we shouldn't do. We're going to fix that because just putting stuff willy nilly into some global namespace, which is there by default, um, is just not a good idea. We haven't related this particular pin button to anything. Is it global or is it does it really belong to something else? Now you could put it into a made up namespace like buttons. So if you had four or five of these buttons in your program, you could have a namespace called buttons. At least you'd know where to look, wouldn't you? I guess I know the, the name of this button is pin button, so we understand what it's doing. But should we put this into a namespace? Well let's let's just let's just do it, shall we? So we've added in the buttons namespace for, for good or bad. And if you had more than one button, I think it would make a lot more sense to have a namespace like this. Now, if we go back to the main file, of course, you'll discover that uh, the compiler is throwing a hissy fit, going uh, there isn't a pin button in sensor anymore. So let's zap all this and see if it can find it. So already it says, ah, buttons, that's namespace button, colon, colon. And it says, oh, pin button. That's what you mean. That's because we've only got one thing defined in that namespace, it's very easy, isn't it? So we go, yes, please, I'll have that. And it's happy again. So now when you're reading this code, you're going digital read, buttons, ah, this is my buttons namespace, pin button. Great. You could have called that namespace anything you like. Yeah, fish, Ralph, buttons, whatever. The idea, though, is that you, as the developer, have to think, how will I expect this to be grouped logically in the future and if buttons works for you that's great if you think interface or even the word global would work yes whatever it is if you use a namespace even for global variables a they become not global anymore because they're constrained within the scope of whatever the namespace it is you've defined and it just makes your code so much better to maintain and read now, namespaces are what's known as open, which means you can add stuff to them and continue to do that in separate files if you want. So you could, for example, place all your variables for a particular namespace in one namespace in a file, and then in a different file, continue that namespace and put all your code. So, for example, in your sensors helper in here, um, you've got your code here. Oh, look. It's picked up the fact that pin button doesn't doesn't work anymore. Hmm. So you've got your code here as part of sensor, but the actual variables, these here, could have been put into a different file that you keep all your variables in with a namespace around them as well. So basically, you would just define namespace sensor like that, and then let's assume that namespace sen sensor now ended there. So everything within those curly braces is part of sensor. But, and then you do some other stuff or you, in a different file, you just type it in again, namespace, and that's it. You've done it, okay, namespace sensor, and you've continued this, even if you have other stuff in here. Other stuff goes in here, compiler doesn't care. It sees this namespace again and goes, oh, this is a continuation of a previously named namespace if you've named it previously, okay. Oh yes, we better fix this then. So pin button is no longer part of this local sensor namespace. Let's give it the buttons namespace as we're supposed to. There we are, quite happy with that now. It says, yep, that's the one. Good, and eventually that squiggle will disappear. There we are, gone. Everybody's happy. And more to the point, when you're reading this sensor code in the future, and you see this statement here about setting the, the pin button, you can go, ah, this is part of the button's namespace. Lovely. Nice and structured. Right, one little thing that we mentioned last time in the video about splitting up your code that uh, we never actually got around to. We said that this line here, digital read buttons colon colon pin button equals low, it's all a little bit techy, a bit a little bit low level, isn't it? We're actually talking about real code here rather than just get on and do it type code to make it easy to understand. What would you say if we replace that with something a bit more English, a bit more high level? For example, what happens if we replaced it with 
push button pressed. Now that sounds nice, doesn't it? I mean, that's very meaningful. If push button pressed, go and do this, get the temperature, print the temperature. Sounds good, yeah? And stops you writing all that funny C++ code that, you know, digital read this, that and the other. Hmm. So how does this work? Well, if I hover over it, you'll get an idea. Push button pressed. It says, oh, look, it's a define push button pressed. And here I've got that code that we used to have in there. Now, this is used quite a lot. In fact, I use it a couple of times in my smart workshop heater controller because I've got some, well, worse than this tests. You know, if it's this time of day and not that time of day and the temperature's higher than this, and all that means, this big long if statement, it basically means in my code, if it's daytime and it's warm enough. But I don't want to type that in over and over again. One, it looks ugly, and B, you're likely to get it wrong. So by defining it like this, and then using an English statement instead, that looks better. Where have I defined this, do you think? Push button pressed. Where would I define it? Would I define it in LCD helper, in sensor helper, or globals? Well, yes, it is a global, isn't it? And defines are not subject to namespace um, scope because the define happens at preprocessor level before the C++ compiler ever gets it look in. So defines, even if you were to put them into this namespace of buttons, which I haven't, it's outside, but even if I had it done, that would still work exactly the same way. Because a define, remember, is a simple textual substitution. What happens is when you compile this, it whizzes through the code looking for push button pressed and substitutes everything here. Oh yes, incidentally, you notice I've got brackets around that code, um, which is always a very good idea to do with defines Otherwise, you can get the syntax a bit skewed up um, with semicolons and more brackets. So always put your defines in brackets. So that's what I've done here. So push button pressed, space, there's no equals in the define, remember. It's a simple textual substitution. Whenever you see push button pressed, put in brackets, digital read, buttons, colon, colon, pin, button, close brackets, equal, equals low, close brackets. And all that there... It's not checked or anything. It doesn't. It's not not checked here, where things are. All it says is, can I understand this and put it here, and that's what it expands to. Great, and that now makes your code even more understandable and manageable. Okay, um, all this code is up in the GitHub. You can play around with namespaces. There's there's a little bit more to namespaces, but frankly, at the hobbyist level, I think there's more than enough. I think what we should do as hobbyists, as part of all our helper files, put a namespace at the front so that everything within that file has got a namespace in front of it. OK, I think we might be done. So there we have it. Namespace is, in a nutshell, a very, very useful tool that is very underutilized, I think, quite frankly. Great. OK, now, if you found this namespace tutorial helpful in any way or interesting or entertaining, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd be most grateful. And if you've got any questions or queries or just comments about, oh, I wouldn't do it like that, if you want, yeah, put them down below. And uh, don't forget, subscribe and ring the bell, because otherwise you won't hear from me again, which would be a very sad state of affairs, as I've said before. Mm. OK, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.